Hey everybody, how's it going? Chris here, and hopefully I'm going to bring you a quick video, but I know I blab on a lot, so uh, I'm just going to ramble through all this stuff, give you some updates, tell you what I've been reading, um, and just what's been going on. Um, so, first thing you'll see here is this uh, really cool DC licensed um, Green Lantern sweater that I purchased for my wife, actually, uh, for her birthday. Her birthday was in March. Uh, finally came, oh, this was almost a couple weeks ago now, uh, but she really likes it, uh, she likes the uh, the green of it. <laughs> That's about the only thing uh, I, I guess she really enjoys about Green Land, <laughs> really, is the green. Uh, but really cool sweater, love the black and green, it's really cool. Um, so this is what she's actually going to be wearing um, when we go to the Calgary Comic Con. Um, so let's get into the books that I got. Um, and I got these books on Saturday by, uh, or for my wife. Uh, I had to work and uh, she was going to the city to grocery shop and uh, we got some, uh, she went a little further and she went to a comic shop and was able to get some for me. So thank you very much my lovely wife. I really appreciate it. Uh, a couple of these comic books I really wanted to read. I really wanted to get my hands on them. Um, one of them we actually phoned ahead of time and made sure the um, uh, fella put one behind the counter with a little bit convincing um, the day before he was he was going to put one of the comic books behind the counter for for Nikki so that she didn't have to you know make that three hour round trip basically for and you know get no comic books for me um, so let's get right into it first off there was one purchased for uh, Logan um, and that's Darkwing Duck issue um, 18 uh, and this happened to actually be uh, colored by Lisa Moore you can watch my channel for a while than you know who Lisa Moore is, uh, but she's the the colorist on on Darkwing Duck and and uh, other uh, Kaboom um, um, comic books. And as I recall, she was saying this is one of her first uh, or is the her first major um, job that she did was was Darkwing Duck. Um, I haven't read it. Uh, Logan's thumbed through it. He's looked through it quite a bit already. Um, but uh, my wife says just beautiful covers, great stuff. Uh, I don't think she purchased this one um, knowing that it was actually Lisa Moore's uh, like first major works, but that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, so moving on, as you can see, yes, I did get Avengers vs. X-Men, uh, the printed copy. Um, this is one actually that I phoned ahead of time to make sure they put one behind the counter for us. Um, so uh, there is a digital code in here, but I am slightly reluctant to peel the sticker, um, just being the comic book collector that I am. Um, I, I feel like I don't want to even peel a sticker to reveal the code, but uh, again, with the extra code that I have from uh, Chris and uh, the one in here, if somebody really wants to read the uh, Avengers vs. X-Men digitally, then um, <laughs> again, uh, being somewhat reluctant, I will, I'll, I'll peel the sticker and I will forward um, you know, I'll forward that to you. Um, um, you know, I gotta send on the uh, what would it be? The kindness. I have to pay for the kindness um, that uh, Phil and Chris did for me. So I'll do that for anybody who wants to really read uh, Avengers vs. X Men number one digitally. Um, great issue. I loved it. I know many of you guys have discussed about it already. Um, it was a great setup. Uh, really, what, all what I gotta say is that Cyclops. I've, I don't know. <laughs> I shake my fist at him. He's he's really the the cause for starting this uh, war. Um, and for as much as he wants to, you know, save the X Men and mutants, um, he really instigates. Um, he he really is an instigator of war. Um, so yeah, what a what a. <laughs> um, so. It's going to be really cool. I think one of the dynamics of the story that is going to be interesting is uh, we have Beast and Wolverine on the Avengers side. Um, so that's going to be a unique part of the story. Uh, yeah, really good. Um, the AR, um, if you have a smartphone uh, like the iPhone, then uh, you can partake in this digital um, furthering of the comic through the uh, augmented reality. Uh, which I thought was really neat, and uh, maybe I'll show some clips in this video or not, depending on how long it goes. Uh, but that was really enjoyable to to uh, have Marvel promote printed comics 
but also be able to uh, embrace um, you know this this new digital age that's uh, really happening. Um, so that was that was fun. There was a cool trailer uh, like on the front of, for this for the cover. There was um, some pages that showed uh, original um, uh, like the inks to the to the colors, or uh, one showed a, a varied. Um, uh, panel that was drawn from a different perspective that was unused in the comic book. Um, that was pretty cool. So moving on, uh, really good. Again, these comics mostly as I've talked about, I'm behind. But I could not miss out on this one. It is it is being done so well by Slot. Amazing Spider-Man. Um, really, I mean, anything in Marvel. If you don't want to miss anything, um, just keep picking up Spider-Man. I mean, it's really a flagship title. Um, that Dan, uh, Dan Slott has been doing amazing on. It's really, a, Spider Man is something you, you don't want to be missing right now. Um, this particular one is drawn by uh, Stefano Caselli, um, and great artwork from him, too. I've, I've met him in the past. Uh, very, uh, very in enthusiastic uh, fellow, um, and great artwork. Um, I would have kind of preferred the Del Auto variants. Um, but they would have been more money. But a good thing is uh, in the um, you know front page here, the introduction. There, there's actually Del Auto artwork in the background, um, so I'm able to kind of enjoy both both covers in a way. Um, great story, basically. You know, Doc Ock, he's dying. He's got one last you know um, hurrah. He wants to go out, go out with, and uh, he's got this big plan. Uh, basically, you think that his plan is to um, save the world, and um, you know, by uh, counteracting um, global warming. He shows the world, you know, um, what will happen in the future uh, with global warming. And uh, his plan is saying, hey, you know, let me do what I want to do and I will counteract uh, the future of, of global warming and basically, you know, reign him or, you know, note him as the, um, you know, greatest mind uh, of all time, and that's how he wants to go out. That's how he wants to leave this world, being known as, as the greatest mind of all, and the man who saved um, planet Earth. Um, so, really good story. I love it. Um, great new suit that's introduced. Um, a suit that is meant to... Um, uh, that's got specific designs to go against each of the Sinister Six. Um, but yeah, just really great, really great um, comic book, um, really great artwork, um, nothing more than one of the best comic books um, on the shelf right now, that's that's for sure, that's, it's no slouch. Um, Amazing Spider-Man 683, again, nice cover, nice artwork, continuing that same story, um, they got the Avengers, um, you know, uh, Spider-Man's got the Avengers helping. Because um, he thinks this is a little bit more. This big plan that Doc Oz got is is a little more than something just he himself can take care of. So that's what happens. Um, but in this particular comic book, my copy, um, it is a little uh, messed up. I'll just show you guys quickly. I have contacted Marvel about this, but I do have an error copy, and uh, <laughs> I, I want to know if anybody else has this. Uh, but anyways, you're reading the story. Here they are in the courtroom, and uh, where they stopped Chameleon. And then you flip the page, and then all of a sudden, I'm upside down. And there's four pages that really this should be taken out, turned around, and put back in. Uh, so you see here, I got a few pages uh, upside down. Um, but it also seems like there there might be a page missing or so because there's a really weird break or a jump in the story when I read my upside down comic and try to go um, back so there's the, the courtroom, the continuing the courtroom, then they go to Tony Stark to Modell and then on this page you know they, they go back to the uh, Spider-Man and the Avengers but all of a sudden they're you know there's the Hulk, they're Hawkeye, they're fighting Mysterio and the rest of the Sinister Six and it just makes no sense um, there just seems to be no proper transition there so which makes me think there there's there's a page missing or something so I want uh, your guys' insight on this too if you guys um, experience this um, and it's a little bit cut wrong as well so um, as you see the white 
white bar at the top there that uh, this particular page with Model um, and the rest of uh, the workers at Horizon, some of the dialogue gets cut off at the top for me. So, you know, and that's a three hour round trip for my wife to go pick up comic books for me that, um, you know, have been misprinted, maybe possibly missing some of the story. Um, so I've contacted Marvel, see if they can do anything for me because I really don't want to be driving three hours, spend another 25 bucks in gas to go see if maybe the store can um, trade my copy for one that is printed correctly. So I don't know. Give me your guys' thoughts on that. <laughs> uh, it's just really odd. Um, it's kind of neat to own, you know, misprinted comic books, but um, again, I don't have. Uh, it's not very accessible to me to. Um, get another copy and you guys know I'm saving up a lot of money so I'm a little more disappointed that my money was, was spent on something like that but anyways I was still able to get all of the story and understand it um, great writing by uh, Dan Slott and art by Caselli so moving on and uh, here we have issue number two of Saga Many of you guys are talking about this. Yes, it's awesome. It's great. Uh, Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples. Great artwork by her. Um, this one, you're a little more prepared for the, the shock in this book. Uh, when I first bought issue number one, everybody was talking about how great it was. I knew absolutely nothing about the book. I ended up buying three copies. <laughs> and, then, and then looking through this book and the dialogue and the art, just, it, it just, whoa, made you step back uh, uh, here and there. Um, but it's really great storytelling, um, shocking artwork, um, but the, the, the story and, and the dialogue, I mean, everything, you know, how it shocked you, but um, you went further along and, and, you know, what just shocked you was made okay, um, I guess, by, um, you know, um, further dialogue. Um, it's just really neat, and it's been quite a while. I can't even remember the last time when a comic book has really been has done that. Um, but really, Saga it seems to be uh, quite quite an amazing hit, um, and um, I'm proud to say that uh, Fiona Staples is a uh, is a fellow Canadian. She's a, a fellow Albertan um, as well, and I will be seeing her at the Calgary Comic Con uh, coming up in about two weeks. I have a plan to. Uh, get, you know, the book signed by her, and hopefully if I have some extra money, maybe a little doodle uh, by her as well, I think that would that, that would make my day. Um, the main thing I'm going there for is Stan Lee, of course. Uh, secondary to Stan Lee um, would be uh, Fiona. Um, definitely going to meet her, at least, but uh, I definitely want to get uh, some artwork by her, hopefully. Saga, again, you know, some shocking stuff. It's a comic book that uh, I definitely feel that is not uh, for anybody, um, you know, over the age of 18. Um, but I really like the, the, Brian does really well with the storytelling, I mean, there's a, a mix of so many things, I mean, there's, to me, it's kind of like this intergalactic, um, romance story of, uh, Romeo and Juliet of sorts, um, but there's a mix, kind of like, you know, intergalactic war and Star Wars you kind of see in there, um, you know, Romeo and Juliet, um, kind of a little bit of a horror uh, comic uh, fantasy. You got magic, uh, just a really mixed bag of, of things, but they all um, just really uh, end up fitting together really well. Um, and the the family dynamic, being a family man myself, um, the fi family dynamic um, uh, for the characters of Alana and uh, Marco, Hazel the baby, uh, I find really interesting. That's what. I find really cool. It, you know, you can kind of relate a little bit. Um, of course, it's quite a far out, you know, intergalactic story, but you can relate a little bit, um, and you do have concern uh, for these characters and uh, the emotions of each one is is really cool to read. Um, and uh, if you didn't have that great writing, um, then you know. I mean, the story wouldn't be any good, of course, but there wouldn't be no justification for um, for the for the art for the scenes that are portrayed. If you did not have a good story, there'd be there'd be no point to it. Um, so yeah, just really awesome, really great mix between you know the writing and the art. Um, so really proud that uh, a fellow Canadian has been able to, um, although has you know been on other books. Um, 
uh, Yon probably got uh, really good ratings on those other independent comic books, but Saga definitely has been just like an, an explosion of, uh, of fandom to, co to come out of uh, this particular title, and uh, it really seems like a, a year for uh, image comic books. Uh, the indie comic books this year seem to just be doing really amazing. Uh, so yeah, anyways, that's that. I'm blabbing on too long. I don't want to make this video too long, so I'm just going to cut it right here. But uh, leave me your comments, questions, um, anything to get some interaction. Um, and hope you guys enjoyed this video. Alright, I'm getting out of here. I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.